All right, guys, we're going to do something a little different. This uh, this is four-valve stuff, and it's unbearably tiny. How tiny is it? Doesn't look bad, right? Okay, compare it to a Chevy 194 and a Chevy 15. Ouch. Absolutely tiny. How tiny is it? My pinky just about fills the exhaust. Not going to be easy for me to pour it out, even using my smallest burrs. But, <laughs> you know what's really funny? Take a look at these little springs they put on here. I put everything right in a Ziploc bag because everything is so incredibly tiny. Nicely designed stuff, though, overall. Those little springs are relatively squishy until you lock them under the retainer and keeper. And... No exaggeration, they must have 50 or 60 pounds of, of load on them when they're closed. And you're like, why would you need that? The, valve, the valves are absolutely tiny. Tiny valves. Because this thing revs 10,500 RPM, that's why. Okay. So we can start looking at a couple different things. Obviously... It's a pent roof design. It does look like it has a CNC finished chamber, but notice the big lips around the sides of the valves. We can work on that. Now, in order for me to work on these and not damage the seats, first thing I did is I took them out, and if you can see on the valve, I gave them a quick lap. Make sure everything was in good shape, nothing was bent or anything like that. Made sure the seats were, you know, in good shape. Now, these are so small, I cannot measure the concentricity on here. I don't have any guides that are that tiny. And some of the issues flowing this are multiple. One, I don't have a bore anywhere near that size. But it is almost exactly the same size as my 500 CFM calibration plate. So, I don't also don't have any small springs that I could put on here, put the locks and retainers on, and then compress them. So I may have to do some real hack work in order to uh, at least get a baseline what they flow as they are, and then do my work to them and see if there's a difference. It's going to be kind of ugly. I was expecting them to be small, but wow. Let's go over some design features. Obviously, four valve per cylinder has got great breathing, okay? But if you take a look at this, this is our exhaust. See how it turns? So our ports, especially our port on the right, really has a hard turn, and our transition to the exhaust needs work. Okay, we've got a real sharp transition there. Uh, let's see if I can demonstrate that. This wall, might be able to show you. Comes out at this angle. So this sharp edge here, we can do some serious radius work there and make it so it doesn't, right now the way it's designed, it's aimed right at the other exhaust path. The other exhaust path is really nice. Let's move the light. Okay, the other exhaust path is really nice. It's straight. No problem. The problem is you have you have this air coming in. Let's see if I can get this done for you guys. Like this. Okay, so they're both coming out and they're they're banging into each other right here. If I can do something with that radius and make it so they can exit smoother, that would help at the real high RPM. Now this is actually for a scooter. And uh, I get the feeling that uh, guys race these things. Kinda cool actually. The head is manufactured in Taiwan. Overall, it looks like a really nice piece. And Taiwan has some very good manufacturing capabilities. I hate to say it, but it's true. It looks like a nice piece. I'm sure it wasn't cheap. I looked up TTMRO on the internet and couldn't find anything. Maybe uh, you guys could. 
Okay, the reason the deck is covered with tape is I'm going to need some kind of a, a sealing surface there. So I put that there, plus it'll protect the, the, the deck because I really don't want to bang these up. They are brand new. Now, the intakes are very straightforward. They're both dead straight, coming to a central point. No swirl induced at all. Now, if you guys do some research on uh, DV's polyquad design, he uses four different size valves to initiate swirl. He also does it with those bigger valves in, in one, one side. Let's say, let's say he made this the bigger intake valve. This would also have a bigger intake port. I am going to try to initiate some swirl into this, but I'm not going to be able to measure it because my swirl meter needs to go through the bore adapter, and I can't do that if I'm using my 500 CFM plate as our bore. So I'm going to have to kind of do it and hope for the best. Uh, the owner of this head said he would give us a full report how it works out in the long run, so that will be interesting. It's, uh, it's going to be a challenge, but I did take a bunch of measurements and stuff to show you guys before I, I, dare, I tear into these things. Okay, I almost forgot to show you this side. Overall, really nice casting. Yeah, it's got some crap in it, but castings usually do. Not a big deal, really. Those little bits of, uh, of garbage in the ports aren't going to make much of a difference at all. Now, I did take a quick look at the valve job. I took a look at the throats. Let's take a look at some of those measurements. Intake valve size, 1.022 inches. It sounds big. Looks tiny. Got an 88% throat. Not bad. Usable. The only thing that I could say about that, though, is they go from the throat, the rest of the port is basically the same size as the throat all the way down. I'm not thrilled about that, but this, I really don't want to make that throat any bigger. Okay, Even though it's a 10.5, Remember, four valve per cylinder, okay? The, the lift right off the seat on four valve stuff, the, the, I should say the amount of area that's introduced four valve stuff coming right off the seat is way more than two valve stuff. Okay, I measured the throat. Okay, it's 0.93. You guys can check my math, make sure I didn't goof it up. Our exhaust is a 0.904. We got a 87 0.1% throw, it measures at 1.88. Chamber valve shr shrouding is a minimum, except for that little bit that I showed you. Chamber texture is good. It, it's got a, a slight bit of a texture from the, the CNC machine that goes through there. The valve design is good. Let's take a close-up of those little valves. Okay, neither one has a back cut, but that really isn't going to matter, and it's high RPM anyway. You usually don't want any back on back cuts on really high RPM stuff. They're both got tiny, tiny stems. I measured the stems. Where is it? Okay, four point four point nine six millimeters with my old worn out uh, caliper. So I'm gonna guess those are five mil. They look even smaller than that, but. They are neck down, okay. It doesn't look like much, but there, it is neck down a little bit, which is a good thing. The head's got a nice shape to it, right? That's our intake. That's our exhaust. They're both about the same. I'm going to say about a 13 degree shape on that. Okay, short side radius on each port needs work. I'll explain to you. Uh, you know what? I'll bend a piece of uh, solder around that and I'll show you. All right, not my usual beautiful artwork, but you can get an idea of how steep those ports are and how well they're already shaped. Does that mean we can't improve them? Well, according to my little finger when I first put my finger on that intake port, I said that short side needs a little work. You also have to remember I'm using uh, pretty heavy solder to get those shapes. It's, it's not going to show how the... the internal cut here was made relatively straight. In fact, they came off our bottom cut. Let's take a look at the head. Okay, it's basically a plunge cut down 
and then you can see how it goes into the port itself. We can do a little bit of work on that, but it's already big. It's just, it's just making it bigger isn't really going to help. Okay, let's see what they did uh, on that short side. Okay, you can see on the short side, same type of thing, but they have, it looks like they had a cutter come in. No, I'm wrong, it's just dead straight. Okay, we can work on that and we can gain a little flow out of that. Okay, and that's our exhaust, but you have to realize the way the exhaust is designed, every one of those roofs is going to be different. Now, I did the roof all the way on this side, which is our shortest roof. Okay, notice our roofs get longer and more turned. Okay, overall, nicely machined piece. The guides have uh, very tight tolerances, which you would need for a 10.5 RPM engine. Okay, loose guides, not going to really work well at high RPM. All right, I'm going to have to figure out how I can do swirls with this thing. Uh, swirls, even flows. I don't, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to do it. But I am thinking that I can improve that a little bit. Will it make a huge difference? I don't know. But I think it'll help because uh, just those couple transitions in the chamber, transitions to the intake and exhaust manifold, and the short, short side work, I am going to try to introduce a little swirl to it. I'm not going to be able to measure it. It's going to have to be uh, feedback from the customer, whether it worked or it was a complete failure as usual. In any case, he was willing to go for it. Got to give him credit for that. All right, guys, I'm going to get working on this. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night.